So it's a question that I get uh, asked a lot and I've been making videos now for almost four years and uh, some of the first videos I made were the uh, humble dipole antenna for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Now the dipole antenna that uh, I've got here in front of me is uh, a special type of dipole antenna it's called a Hertzian dipole antenna now I've included this information in previous videos so I thought I'd do a little short video here now just to explain why a uh, Hertzian dipole antenna when you get your uh, ruler out and measure it it uh, measures much smaller than uh, the typical uh, uh, wavelength that you would normally uh, think about of 2.4 gigahertz which is around 31 0.5 millimeters depending where you want to be on that uh, frequency range but uh, the Hertzian di uh, dipole is uh, a lot smaller typically it's uh, 25 millimeters by 25 millimeters although you sometimes find that uh, the main driven element part here is 26 millimeters but then if you measure this part here which is basically the uh, ground plane some people have uh, said that it uh, acts like a ballon but we'll come to that in a moment but uh, if this is 26 millimeters then you have to take away from this and this will be 24 millimeters now I've called this antenna in the past a uh, 25 25 antenna because uh, both elements tend to measure 50 millimeters and uh, typically as I said it's normally 25 millimeters by 25 millimeters because that's the most uh, simplest measurement but again you do find some of these that are slightly longer here at uh, 26 millimeters and slightly shorter here at 24 millimeters I'm not quite sure why uh, some uh, uh, you know designers uh, choose that measurement over the uh, 2525 but maybe it's got something to do with the radiation pattern that it puts out I don't know now as I said this is uh, called a Hertzian dipole antenna and the reason why it's uh, much shorter than a normal 31.25 uh, millimeters is because the entire design of this is uh, capacitive in nature and if you get a antenna that's capacitive it will be shorter than the typical wavelength so it will operate at quite happily at 2.4 gigahertz but because it's capacitive in design it will be shorter now this can work the uh, up in the opposite direction as well if you have an antenna that's inductive in design it will be slightly longer than the uh, wave uh, typical wavelength to work at that uh, particular frequency so if we had a uh, inductive uh, antenna designed to work for 2.4 gigahertz it could be uh, 40 millimeters long but still work just fine because it's a uh, inductive design although we don't normally see an inductive design it's uh, you know not really uh, practical to do that because you always tend to want to be as small as possible but uh, these are capacitive in design and that's the simple reason why they are shorter than the normal typical 31.25 millimeters you would tend to have to be you know in the middle of the uh, spectrum for 2.4 gigahertz now the Hertzian dipole has been around for a long long time the mathematics around it has been around ever since uh, radio and radio waves um, became a thing and Maxwell's equations stack up really well when uh, using the mathematics for Hertzian dipole there's no black magic going on here there's no you know uh, mystical spells cast on this to make it smaller it is purely because it's capacitive in nature and it does not break any mathematical rules any kind of um, you know flat earthers speed of light rules which I've had in my videos in the past trust me um, but uh, it's it's rooted there in the maths it's rock solid and it's been around for a long time so typically why don't you get uh, many videos on YouTube talking about this and you don't because a lot of people don't really understand it and to be honest with you the mathematics behind this I don't particularly understand either uh, the, the way I've come at maths ever since I got interested in this I first got interested uh, in this around uh, 2001 and uh, the mathematics is something that I kind of skirt around 
on it's it's not something I do every day so I'm not proficient in it in any kind of way and to be honest with you you've got to be a physicist who works with this kind of maths day in day out to stay on top of it but um, I as far as maths is concerned with me myself I look at it in the same way as I know French as a second language France is uh, one of my favorite countries in the world I just love France and ever since I was at school I've uh, tried to learn the French language now I left school knowing about uh, you know the same kind of level as what most people in uh, schools in Britain left in the uh, 1980s with and I've uh, tried to teach myself um, you know extra f phrases of the language even had apps in the past to try and broaden my uh, spectrum of the French language and I wouldn't call myself fluent in any way shape or form but uh, if you plonk me down in the middle of Paris I could probably get around with my uh, you know <laughs> preschool uh, version of the French language I mean I'm pretty sure there's uh, three-year-olds in in France that uh, know a lot more of the broader spectrum of the French language than I do but I can kind of get around and find my way around and that's what I'm like with the mathematics when it comes to uh, antenna design I can recognize an equation and I have a broad idea of what that equation is and I can work with that especially if I've got my books next to me that I can refer to now as I said I've talked about this in previous videos and these two antennas here are antennas that I've made in previous videos these this one here is the one that I made out of uh, silver because it's a much better conductor than copper and I've got my copper one here that I made and these two are my reference antennas for uh, uh, basically uh, getting my uh, spectrum analyzer and in particular my network analyzer to calibrate them to make sure they're working uh, as intended so these are my two reference antennas here but all of these antennas in front of you here are dipole antennas so this is the most simple dipole antenna that you uh, can get it's basically a length of coax and the outer braid you've got 25 millimeters long and the inner core which is the main driven element is 25 millimeters long so I'm just exposing the inner core there uh, um, you know on top of the uh, outer braid here and basically that is a small dipole antenna and then you can solder these two in place if you want to solder it to a Wi-Fi card for instance and you've got yourself a simple dipole antenna this is the next stage where you can uh, solder it onto an SMA connector so you can remove it and uh, connect it to something else so makes it a little bit more versatile but basically all of these in front of me are Hertzian short dipole antennas and this is the most common antenna on the planet for uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi you find them everywhere it's more common than any other antenna that's why I don't quite get it when people uh, and I must get a comment every week on some of my older dipole antennas telling me that uh, 25 millimeters is not the correct measurement for the wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz and I don't know what I'm talking about most of the time I just uh, ignore it and sometimes they put a little uh, link to a page where you know you've got the typical equation there for working out the velocity over frequency but um, basically that's why these are shorter because they're a capacitive design so I've got a uh, dipole antenna here that I've taken off a uh, old router so let's crack this open and get the uh, ruler out and take a closer look at it I'm probably gonna have to get some pliers to uh, pop this open but let's get a ruler on there and measure it just to find out the uh, measurements inside and I'm going to say now that this is uh, probably going to be 25 millimeters by 25 millimeters so I've taken the top off there and you can see here the driven element of the dipole antenna and if I put it up on top of the ruler hopefully you can see there it's just a smidgen over 25 millimeters you've got to be really careful where you measure this off at because you've got the uh, what looks like brass here of the uh, ground plane of this uh, particular antenna and this only starts being the driven element exactly where the uh, this actually stops and uh, that can include solder as well so if there's a little bit of solder uh, around here holding this in place to the outer braid of the coax you have to take that into account so this will only start radiating where this stops but if we 
put it over the top of this ruler here hopefully you can see that's uh, 25 millimeters so now let me see if I can extract the rest of the antenna out of this plastic hopefully there's not too much glue holding it in place and if we get the ruler on that we can see that that is also 25 millimeters so as I said sometimes you get this where this is 26 millimeters but if you do get uh, the driven element that's 26 millimeters you will always see that extra millimeter taken away from uh, this ground plane here now why does this uh, work as a uh, capacitive antenna meaning it's short a lot of people said that uh, this is acting like a ballon and uh, they're probably correct I'm not entirely sure why I think this is uh, acting as a uh, kind of ballon but you normally see capacitive antennas that have a loading coil on the bottom and you tend to see that quite a lot with uh, CB radios when you've got the uh, aerial antenna on uh, attached to the top of the roof of the car and uh, those particular designs those mag mount uh, CB antennas are capacitive in nature and they have to be because uh, it makes it allows you to use a shorter antenna with uh, a, you know a CB radio that has a, a much longer wavelength and if you uh, produce an antenna for the particular wavelength of a uh, say an FM CB radio it would be much much longer and you would be hitting that antenna every time you went through uh, underneath a low bridge or through a tunnel for instance it would just be so long it would be impractical so they have a loading coil on there which means you can have a much shorter antenna and that antenna will then work at that given frequency we also find uh, this on uh, these kind of dipole antennas as well uh, you sometimes open them up especially the longer range ones and they have a loading coil like this one here now this here is 60 millimeters long this is one full wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz but because we've got this loading coil here we've been able to shorten that by half bring the uh, length of the antenna down and still will work at a one wavelength long here this is 25 millimeters or it will be when it's cut off and attached to a proper uh, dipole antenna like this one you would normally find this this part is actually that part so it will be soldered on like that and then you've got uh, a uh, longer range dipole antenna with a little bit more gain so you've got a quarter wavelength here quarter wavelength here loading coil and one full wavelength there so whether this part is acting like a loading coil it probably is or whether it's a cross between a loading coil and a ballon but still making the antenna capacitive I'm not entirely sure as I say I uh, skirt around the mathematics I kind of get the idea what it is they're talking about in the summer I uh, am going to Leeds University and I will try and ask in the physics department if they can explain it to me in uh, more simpler details what's actually going on with this part of the antenna to make it a uh, capacitive design but uh, the thing about mathematics is the reason that we use it is some things just can't be explained in plain language and that's why it's explained in mathematics now another design where you see this at work as well is the compact collinear uh, antenna which uh, I've built one in the past before for 2.4 gigahertz and I think I've built one for 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi as well and because you've normally got two coils in that design that works in exactly the same way bringing the overall length of the antenna down below what you would normally find if uh, you were working on a wavelength a quarter wavelength at 31.25 millimeters so there's nothing special going on here it's just the uh, design of the antenna changes the length of the wavelength slightly which is something I've tried to explain with all the different designs that I make is sometimes you'll find that I'm uh, knocking five millimeter sorry five millimeters off on some designs adding it on some others a little bit shorter and a little bit longer but different designs um, you know can be slightly capacitive or slightly inductive and that's why uh, the overall wavelength is not set in stone now I've also had people say over the years that this is not a uh, dipole antenna and they tend to reference this kind of uh, dipole antenna when talking uh, 
about a uh, dipole antenna and this is a uh, dipole antenna this particular design is not capacitive in any way shape or form so you would normally see quarter wavelength here at around 31 0.5 millimeters and a quarter wavelength here at around 31.5 millimeters for 2.4 gigahertz typically now the reason we don't tend to use this design for Wi-Fi or even FPV is because its radiation pattern isn't very good it's not very practical uh, radiation pattern because it gives something like this excuse my uh, doodling here but um, it's not an overall uh, you know radiation pattern especially uh, omnidirectional where you do tend to see this a lot is uh, with the uh, Yagi antenna design but this design is what most people point to when talking about a uh, dipole because this is used in the uh, ham radio circles it's the bread and butter of uh, ham radio antenna design but uh, the bread and butter for uh, Wi-Fi antenna design is uh, this one and that's why it's the most popular design for uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi on the planet you find it everywhere even if you buy uh, an FPV card at 2.4 gigahertz you normally find that you get a cheap little dipole antenna given to you with that I mean you tend to upgrade this as soon as possible but if you uh, pop this open you will find that it measures 25 millimeters by 25 millimeters and radiation pattern is the reason why these are so popular and the most common antenna used at these frequencies because it gives out that nice donut shaped omnidirectional radiation pattern that gives a nice even distribution in all directions so I'll include some further literature uh, below including the Wikipedia page that's got a uh, paragraph on the Hertzian dipole doesn't go into too much of a description on the Wikipedia page but a few papers have been uh, released uh, over the last couple of years that do try to explain this but again they uh, use maths heavily in uh, those descriptions but I hope you found this video useful and uh, the reason why sometimes you find an antenna that can be too short because it's capacitive and sometimes you'll find an antenna that's too long because it's inductive.